good morning. This is Bill from Auto Europe in Naples, and today I have one of the finest examples of an R129 Roadster that I have seen in probably 10 years. Uh, the R129, it replaced the R107. These are all Mercedes-Benz uh, internal chassis numbers. Forgive me, I'm putting my glasses away, so the phone's shaking a little bit. Too much coffee this morning. Uh, anyway, uh, this car had really big shoes to fill. The uh, R107, you might know it as, you know, like the 560 SL, the 380 SL, had been in production since 1972, all the way through its final model year of 1989. And truly by 1989, it was something of a, yeah, a classic car, even when it was sold new in the showrooms. And what this car was supposed to do was transport the SL into the modern era. And so it did. Uh, you know, it's an incredible machine in terms of its uh, technology at the time. Uh, the soft top was so uh, incredibly cool to watch that it would actually draw a crowd uh, when you would uh, stow it. And, you know, the suspension, the engine, the traction control, uh, you know, you name it, uh, everything got updated in this car. And it truly is the birth of the modern Mercedes. It's where, you know, sort of the modern era meets the classic era and moves forward from there. There's a lot of touches of this car that are the nuts and bolts and, you know, wood and other sort of engineering from the, uh, you know, history of Mercedes and a lot of stuff that's from the new era where uh, we were getting into technological advances and fantastic engines and transmissions and suspension and braking and that sort of thing. Okay, you can see it's all original paint. This is a one owner car with mileage in the 60s. It's absolutely incredible uh, to find one of these cars in this condition. Uh, you know, it's really rare finding a 97 one owner anything, but when it's a black and tan SL320, that's pretty cool. Now, the 320 had the six-cylinder engine in it. Uh, you know, this was preferred by some people for gas mileage, for sort of responsiveness, if you will. Uh, you know, the V8 uh, is, of course, an awesome machine, but uh, there's a nimbleness to the six-cylinder that the 8 just doesn't have. Uh, again, you can see the condition of the paint is incredible. This thing has been garage-kept since new, uh, absolutely gorgeous to look at, and everything just first-rate. Let's start inside the trunk. All right, so in here are the original floor mats, and you can see this is not dirt. That's just what you call it, uh, shading. Uh, you know, incredible to find the original mats, never mind in great condition. Uh, this little guy here, the windscreen gets stored behind that. It's nice to see. Uh, somebody added an Alpine CD changer that has the same... Uh, interface as the Mercedes unit, which I believe is built by Alpine, so it clicks right up and installs. Uh, this is cool, and I left that in there. That is not the medical kit from that car. That is from an earlier Mercedes, and what that tells me is that the guy who owned this car probably had been driving Benzes for years. Uh, underneath this bit of carpet here is the spare tire tool kit. It's all in great shape. And uh, again, look at the fit and finish, the way everything goes together, the carpeting, the carpeting on the back of the trunk. Uh, you know, this is a real luxury item with true craftsmanship going on. Have a look under the hood. I'm fighting mist again this morning. I, you know, I don't know. I need to move to a drier climate. I'm going to start selling cars in Arizona. I've always dreamed of selling cars in Alaska, you know, to sort of combat the hot weather in Florida. Go up there and sell snowmobiles or something. I guess they call them snow machines up there. All right, so the release for the hood is underneath the star, in case you're hunting for it. And in here, you're going to find a dual overhead cam. Uh, what is it? 24 valve six cylinder, putting out about 223 horsepower. Uh, this was a fantastic upgrade to Mercedes Benz inline six and uh, was the, uh, the final incarnation of the inline. Uh, you know, great horsepower rating, good economy, good torque. Uh, it's a fantastic engine in this car. And being a 97, it's made into a five speed automatic that's nice and smooth. Uh, you can see the condition is stellar. Absolutely fantastic under here. You look at some of these, all this stuff gets gnarled up or corroded. Not in this car. Uh, that's the original factory coating on the uh, water neck cover there. And uh, everything just almost show quality under the hood. So uh, really nice piece there. Here's an idea. Okay, you see the light sensor there in the center of the windshield. 
uh, behind the mirror. You know, that's something they didn't have in the R107, which was designed in the 60s. And uh, that's what I mean about sort of getting into the modern era. But uh, when you look at uh, other features of the car, uh, you know, like the fit and finish, the door, the wood, the materials, this big uh, chunky chrome skid plate, this big chunky chrome handle on the seats. That's all vintage Mercedes stuff. So uh, as well as the uh, the instrument cluster, which we'll get into in a minute. So it, it's kind of neat just to see old and new coming together. Uh, this car does have the uh, windscreen installed. There it is. You just flip it up. That'll cut down your noise. It's got mist on it. Oh, I'm crying out loud. Anyway, uh, that'll keep your wind noise and buffeting down when you're driving around at speed with the top down. What it's attached to is a roll bar. Now, this was a pretty cool feature, uh, again, that came out with these cars. So you can raise and lower that manually with a button, but in the event of uh, an accident of some kind, calamity, bad things happening, that thing will ratchet up in a split second uh, you know, just like an airbag to keep your head protected in a rollover. Very, very cool stuff. All right, back here you can see the package shelf. Again, that's just shading you're seeing from our detailer. It is mint, absolutely perfect back there. You got two little compartments. Uh, that one you're not going to have much fun with. That's just the Bose subwoofer and amp. Uh, so you're not going to fit anything in there. But on the other side, you have a nice little storage compartment to put stuff. Uh, beautiful leather bucket seats, absolutely gorgeous, fantastic condition. Uh, you know, Chevy copied this for their Silverado, I think, the uh, and their Yukons and whatnot. The seat belt uh, housing within the seat makes it much easier to grab, and uh, you know, pretty cool and stylistic design. All right, let's hop in. What I'm gonna do is run the top. If I can ever find the damn keys, I'll start it up and we'll run the top. Now, I wish I could do this from outside the car. This is where having a helper would be nice. Uh, because again, when this came out, it was just so unique and uh, really was a spectacle to behold. But you've got this big red button here. Let me turn that radio off and uh, turn off our defrost. Big red button, and when you push it, it lights up. You can see the top cover comes up. I mean, this may seem all pedestrian now, but again, in 1990, uh, 1990, when the car came out, it was unheard of. Look at the beautiful aluminum frame in the top, the lovely headliner, latches itself into place, down comes the back, seals very nice, keep your fingers on the button, and up come the windows. So let me show you the soft top on the car so you get a feel for that. Absolutely mint, gorgeous, perfect stitching, spotless and clear back window. I mean, crystal clear, no wear marks here. Again, this thing was just so babied and pampered and dealer serviced and garage kept. No curb rash on the wheels. Uh, the whole car is just incredibly mint for a, for a, a R129. You just don't see them like this anymore. This is a car that would have been for sale on the Mercedes lot in like 1998 in the same condition. All right, so we're gonna put the top back down. Again, I'm pulling back on it now. Up comes the back. It's gonna release with a bang up front. I have these big cylinders that hold them in place. And down goes the top. Very, very nice. So then I'm gonna get windows back down. If I wanna run the roll bar, I can move it up with this guy. Some guys drive around like that with the roll bar up for stylistic reasons, which looks cool, got to admit. Uh, you know, it looks a little stupid with the windscreen mounted to it, but uh, otherwise that's how it looks when the thing comes up, uh, you know, on its own as well. Let's get that back down. Now before we go for a spin, I'll show you one more touch from the vintage Mercedes that I just love, and that is the uh, headlight washer wipers. I mean, that's pretty cool stuff, and that's long since vanished. Uh, those things only work, by the way, when you're using your uh, windshield washer in, uh, in, in the nighttime with the lights on. The only time you'll see them go, and it was designed for, you know, desert conditions. You're driving through the desert. You're some kind of Saudi sheik trying to get to your harem. Uh, you know, your wipers and, uh, you know, your windshield are getting covered with dust. Bam! A little bit of wash and wax there, and... Everything's clear sailing. Okay, so inside, 
again, beautiful quality. You have to remember these were, you know, seventy to ninety thousand dollar cars back then, and the fit and finish was according with that price tag. Uh, beautiful leather steering wheel. Uh, going back to uh, a vintage Mercedes display uh, on the cluster, it's just awesome. Uh, you got all those warning lights stacked across the bottom. Of course, none of them on. Uh, you've got your uh, economy gauge, which has always been completely worthless, but pretty cool the way it's. Um, uh, works when you're going down the road, vacuum operated. Uh, you have your Celsius uh, uh, temp, your oil pressure, which is pegged where you want to see it, uh, 160 mile an hour speedo, your tack, your clock, analog. All the condition of the uh, hieroglyphics on the knobs and switches is fantastic. Uh, you have this vintage style. I think this is the same light switch. They had in like a 58 model, uh, once for parking, twice for headlights pull for uh, front fog, pull twice for rear fog. Uh, rear fog, by the way, is just one bright light on the left side, so don't run around with that thing or you're gonna look silly. Uh, over here, that's city light, so if you want the parkings on on the right, if you're parking on the left, or if you want your parkings on on the left, if you're parking on the right, uh, but off is right in the middle. So when you're turning these things off, don't do that, or you're gonna have half your parking lights on straight up and down is off. Uh, now these things are kind of a common failing in this car. You see the little vent adjusters are gone. Pretty irritating. I have a new set ordered for this car. They haven't come in yet. I didn't want it to hold up the photo and the video, but they'll be in there before the car goes. And uh, it's just a real common thing. Uh, I've had to replace dozens of them. Uh, here's a nice little place. They used to put the factory cell phone in there uh, if it was uh, ordered. Otherwise, it's a great place to keep your stash of stuff. Your, uh, you know, maybe even a little 25 automatic could fit in there. Uh, nice big uh, airbag over here, airbag here. You've got automatic climate control. You can see all the hieroglyphics and the display in perfect shape, the uh, LCD. Uh, you got your in-dash uh, uh, AMF. Let me turn that back off in dash AM FM cassette. The cassette is actually useful now because if you want to run a auxiliary input, instead of having one installed, you got one of those cassette adapters, put it in and you can run your uh, phone through it. Uh, all works great, you know, nice. Uh, we got NPR going this morning. Uh, I'm sure they're crabby about something. Power antenna works good. You got your shifter here. Uh, that's a uh, door lock. Uh, this is your um, uh, hazards, of course. Uh, your ASR, which is an advanced trash control, you can turn that off there, and that's your roll bar control. Down here you have your power mirrors, you got your windows, you got winter summer setting on the transmission. I don't know why we're in winter here, and uh, of course your big top button. Over here you got this great big roller tray uh, that gives your cup holder nice stuff. Uh, this little thing slides back and forth for where you need it for your elbow, and then hilariously, well, can't get it open with one hand, apparently. All right, well, inside that guy is a vintage Oki cell phone. Just hilarious to see. And uh, there it is. So let's go for a spin. Uh, again, real quick, look at the way the carpeting comes up the sides. This is so vintage Mercedes and so lovely. You know, the amount of uh, money and time and energy put into the design and production of this car, great. Uh, you can see the seat switches in perfect shape. Um, all up here, sometimes this plastic can be all cracked and nasty. And, uh, you know, a lot of these cars are beat. Sometimes the uh, visor covers are gone. You can see they're up there in this. You know, this thing was just so beautifully uh, owned and maintained. Again, by the guy who, you know, paid 70, 80 grand for it back in 97. So that's the guy you want maintaining your car before you get it. get a hint of that nice long rev band from the six. Of course, SL stands for sport light, or at least the German words that have the same front initials. And that's what this thing is. I don't know about light, but it sure is sporty. And of course, it harkens back to the uh, 50s 300 SL gull wing. So a really uh, important mark in the Mercedes lineup. It goes down the road perfect. No vibration from the steering wheel. Smooth pedal feel. Smooth braking. Smooth everything. I mean, this is just as close to a new 97 uh, SL320 as you're going to find. Look at that. No vibration from the brakes at all. Perfect uh, stopping. And a pep from that 6. 
<laughs> the sound it puts out. Very, very sporty. Don't let anyone tell you you're giving anything up with the six cylinder. Uh, anyway, there it is. 97 Mercedes-Benz SL320 Roadster, uh, soft top, perfectly working. We got the hard top back at the shop on a stand. Uh, everything in great shape. If you have an interest, give us a call. Oh, there's Mr. Sun. 239-649-7300 uh, on the web at MercedesExpert.com. Thanks so much for having a look. We really appreciate it. Give us a call on this one. You're going to love it. Uh, the price is right. It's a fantastic collectible. Great Sunday cruiser. Great condo car. Whatever you want to use it for. Uh, thanks again. We'll see you with the next one. Take care.